Scottish Cup, the second oldest competition in football history and the oldest trophy in football. It dates back as far as 1847 where Queen's Park beat Clydesdale 2-0 in the inaugural final and it holds a European record for attendance in the National Cup final when Celtic played Aberdeen in 1937 and it attracted 147,365 people. There's no doubt that the Scottish Cup is steeped in history. It's also had its range of venues from Cafkin Park in Cafkin to New Logie Green in Edinburgh. But it's here at Hamden that the majority of history has been made. Queen's Park won the inaugural 1874 Cup final here against Clydesdale and it is here in May where two of the 130 teams that enter the tournament will play at the final. But for some it's a chance at winning a cup, for some it's a chance at a shock, for some it's a chance of TV money. Tonight's match between Pollock and Huntley was supposed to be shown on the BBC but they will no longer cover it due to matters surrounding the Queen's death. But if they won't, we will. Let's head to Newlands Field. I mentioned earlier how different clubs can have different aspirations in the Scottish Cup but one thing I think that unites all fans is that the Scottish Cup provokes great memories. It doesn't even need to be about your own club. For example, if I was to think about Motherwell, I would think of Karen McHugh's winner in the last minute of the quarter-final against Hearts. It was a great strike. But there's things that have happened for other clubs as well. I think of Super Kelly going ballistic or David Gray's last minute winner for Hibs to get them to win the first Scottish Cup in 114 years. So what about the fans here? Whether it be their own club or another club, what memories does the Scottish Cup provoke in them? Uh, probably the away trips, more, the, more so than ever. Uh, the away trips to the grounds that we've never been before, so that sort of thing. Is this, did this count as one of them then? Yes, yeah, definitely, yeah. Like yeah. First, first trip. And what's your first impressions on the ground? Yeah, it's nice, yeah. Old school sort of setup, I would say, yeah. Oh, it's got, it's got I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it's that for for teams like Pollock, man, it's the it's the highlight. You want to be in the cup, you want to be playing against the big teams, so it's it's just great to see us back in here again. You know what I mean? Scottish Cup. I'm a Thistle fan. Me and my wee granddad go to the games. Scottish Cup reminds me of Thistle playing the smaller clubs. I've never seen Hamden in my life with Thistle, so I'm unfortunate, but. It reminds me of playing, we actually played Huntley, Cove Rangers, um, even getting away trips to Celtic Park. Scottish Cup is about bringing people together, the community tonight, sell out, do you know what I mean? It's bringing the community together to support their local club. The Scottish Cup, nothing compares to it. Scottish Cup for me is Pollock, winning a couple of times in the Scottish Cup. Great days, great nights, and life goes on. What are some of the nights to get you? Were you sober enough to remember who you were playing? Or? Uh, Arthurly, Arthurly. Arthurly. Was, uh, it's Arthurly. a big rivalry for you, is that yes, into Arthurly? Is the worst one. A club founded in 1908, Pollock established itself as a junior juggernaut throughout the years. The new structure of the Scottish football pyramid now reflects things here at Newlands Field. They have new disabled facilities, new floodlights, and a new hope. Nothing would ignite that hope more than a run in the Scottish Cup. Tonight, they faced Huntley of the Highland League and while the pyramid structure may tell you that Huntley are favourites for this match, they currently sit 16th in the Highland League and Pollock have had a strong start to the season with only three points off the summit of the West of Scotland Football League. So how much would a cup run mean to the Lock fans? Oh, do you know, I, I want to see us go as far as we can go, do you know what I mean? I, I'd love to see us in the next round, I'd love to see us against some of the big teams, I'd love to see us go up against somebody in uh, like the, the Premiership or you know whatever I think, I think it's up to us we can do it we, we, can, we can definitely go for it see we've done maybe two or three rounds I think we'd do well so a couple of rounds getting some money yes I, I would like to, I would like them to get to the fourth round fourth round so they can get a big tie he wants, he wants, a, he wants a Premier League side in the fourth round the club are now under the stewardship of Murdo McKinnon and the board's faith in McKinnon was reflected by giving him a new four-year deal at the end of last season. As I say, they are three points off the summit at the West of Scotland Football Week. So is that confidence that's been shown by the board also felt by supporters? Maybe high, maybe not. 
Is that that's a Switzerland dancer for you there, so gonna he's uh, he's literally leaning on the fence by the way, don't he? He's, no, he's, no, he's, no, he's no, leaning no, on no. it. There you go. <laughs> Three points off the top of the league. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to see uh, yeah. I'd love to see him do well. I'd love to see the team do well. I mean I, I, I would hope DC is kind of pushed for, for promotion this season, we'll see how we get on. Finally, can you give me a score prediction? I've been talking to a few people from Aberdeen and they're saying that they're not very confident. Neither am I, because we don't know what they're like. We don't know how they play, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I think they'll win, but I don't know quite how much. I'm going for a 3 0 pullet. God, Huntley aren't even getting a goal, and who's scoring? Who's scoring the goals tonight? Adam Ford, Stuart McCann, and David Bromley. Eh, uh, 3 0 to Pollock. Go for it. That's the second person saying 3 0. Thank you very much, Christian. <laughs> Leave all up. I think it's going to be a great game, but I have Pollock for the way. I think I'm going to go 3 1 Pollock tonight. 3 1 Pollock. There you go, guys. I'm going to leave the link to this guy's channel in the description. Legend, stuff. thank you very much. Um, and go and give him a subscribe to the spot. Good man. What a view that is with the fog lights and the sun setting as the teams come out for this first round Scottish Cup tie. Pollock versus Huntley. First chance of the game is a Huntley corner. That's unusual. Goalkeepers getting protected for the referee. <laughs> Absolutely nothing in it. The referee was for the team kick. Just let it play go on. Yep, Pollock won. Huntley now is a great start for the home side. And it's great played on the right hand side. The ball was whipped in by, I believe it was Christie. And Mackay gets his head on it, and Christy, just as I'm explaining that, has sent Paul 2 0 up. He runs beyond the defence and hammers it into the bottom corner. But yeah, so that's a goal and an assist now for him. The first one he gets down the flank, whips it in, and Stuart McCann's at the head in, and then he's just broke beyond the Huntley defence and hammered it into the bottom corner. And Pollock finds himself 2 0 up. What a start for the lock. The referee, he's pulled him back for the free kick there, right? And that's Christie's gone mental because while well, the free kick looks like it's in a good position, that's Christie was over in that wing and acres of space about to put in a cross. I think the referee should have let the game go. So let's see what happens to this free kick. Miles over the bar. I tell you what, for this first half, there's one man that's been at the centre of everything good that's been done by Pollock, and it's Daz Christie. He picks up the ball again there, as you see, clips one in. I couldn't quite see who got ahead on it because of the amount of bodies in front of me, but it was cleared off the line by the Huntley defence. I tell you what, the BBC will be sitting and wishing they would have came and covered this one because it's been some game, I don't believe, about half an hour. The 90 or so Huntley fans trying to create a bit of noise, but... <laughs> Oh, like a fart in the lift, to be honest with you. Whipped in. Oh. Couldn't even beat the first man. One thing that infuriates every football supporter is Paul and Brooks. And Buchanan, is he going to be in here? The referee said that he's committed a foul. I don't know how. He's the two of them are just jostling for the ball there, but. Anyway, referee's called the Mars, but it's still 2 0 Pollock. Substitution for Pollock. Fraser's had to go off with a back injury, and he's been replaced by Lyon. I don't see that disrupting the flow of the game too much. I think um, 
you can say what you want about pyramid structure at the minute, but in the minute to me, the West of Scotland football week looks miles above the Highland League. Uh, Huntley have been really, really poor, and I'm sorry if there's any Huntley fans watching to have to say that, but the Pollock goalkeeper's not in a safe to make at all. Um, aye, it's been all Pollock. Um, the referee, he's had a couple of decisions here, they will rate that at the end of the game, but I have I've enjoyed the game. I've seen plenty of games that have been worse here at Newlands Field. Let's put that way. Well, what? Oh! That's well, what, Bell, but he's doing funny. It's the best chance for him in the half. Fighting for us from a pull up point of view. It goes wide. Just gone half time now, there was the first real chance for Huntley. He's a shot coming in for the end of the box. Paul, the goalkeeper, does brilliantly tap it around the post. And uh, I just want to say, I was just about to do a wee recap of the first half there as the whistle went actually. Uh, I have to say that Daz Christie and Fraser Mullen, they've been getting. Mullen, where did that accent come from? Fraser Mullen, they've been getting loads of joy doing the right hand side for Pollock. That's what everything has came from from a Pollock point of view. Um, that's Christy, I'm going to name my man in the match at the end. He's going to need a big performance in the second half of Sunday for it not to be him, because he's got his assist and he's got a goal win and he plays a part in another move for Pollock in the first half for the Clips one into the middle of the box and the header is cleared off the line. I couldn't quite see who got their head on it due to the amount of bodies in front of me, but Pollock have been fantastic. I've came in and watched a couple of bowling games here at Newlands Field before. This isn't one of them. Um, and as I said during the game, the BBC will be wishing they were here because at half time there's been chances, there's been goals. I told you in the process, but as you can tell by the noise. Yay! Here you go. Ball. Ball. Yeah! Oh, it's a ball! No! Oh, no! The park and it's that's barely with a header. No! It's a punch of beta, he doesn't mean it's the bottom, no! I do. Fucking dream watch for this one here. <laughs> A goal. Yeah. It is a goal! It's a substitute line! It's no. great play again for the man of the match, Christy! He puts it across the line, what a lot of goalkeeper! Five for Paul! It was a scramble on the goal line! Oh! It was a shoot! It's in by one of the Paul players, but I don't think it was. I wonder who won Scotland's best dugger. That's what the place does. Pollock six. Holy no. I don't care about the guy with the worst part on the YouTube oh, scene, that kind of thing. Worst part on the Zesga. Happy man. I wasn't with that. Buzzing me. Buzzing. Boys were outstanding, weren't they? Uh, no, spells, no, but spells. I think a couple of spells we were quiet in the game and then we just get hit that wee bit of form and we up the gears. We could be a lead to it. We showed that tonight, didn't we? Obviously, your last result was a disappointing feature against Peace, but to come back with a result like that against a Highland League side in a competition like the Scottish Cup, it just shows the character that the boys have got into it. 100%, mate, and it's not even to be honest with you, it's been. We've been dying for that game to come because that's been two weeks since that last game because the games got called off last weekend. So boys have prepared well and they were they were brilliant tonight. I can't we can't ask for any more. We've kept a clean sheet. Brilliant me, I'm delighted. I know you're probably going to come back with an answer what everybody was brilliant, but there's two players that I want to highlight. Ah, I go for that. Uh, I thought the link up play between Daz Christie and Cesar Mullins looked like he was all night and he's been getting joy doing that that right hand side. Oh, now, is that something that he's identified before the game or is that yeah, just something that happened? Is it, is it the game your assessment's bang on, Fraz and Daz have 
link up well, and that's, that's just what happens with good players, man. They're on, they're on the same wavelength, and I'm winding Daz up in there. I'm going 35 with his energy levels like that, but he's telling me he's 34, not I mean, Stephen Barnett, he's halfway to his 35. Oh, he's, he was unbelievable tonight, Daz, to be fair to him, and, 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 and I rang with a lot of the other boys, but aye, he, was, he was outstanding, took his goals well. And sorry to end it on this note, but there's been a lot made of it that the BBC didn't come here the night when we did. Who? Exactly, Who? exactly. Do you know what was on telly instead? Scotland's best dunk. That's what was on TV oh, instead of this. Listen, if you're watching Scotland's best dunk rather than watching that, then there's something wrong with you, because that was quality for They're kicking themselves, eh? Six still. Amazing. Listen, they've had to make a decision based on it, but listen, old boys, the main thing I'm happy about the gaffers buzzing about is we put on a display. Look, the lights have been out and all that. That's because that's cause that's cause I'm talking. Because the BBC didn't use the money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, anyway, anyway we we'll end it there, but listen, if you can go and subscribe to PG and that what these boys do for uh, this level as well, fantastic. And I think nights like tonight's show, the quality that you can see at this level. So if you've got nothing to do on a Saturday or even a Friday night, get yourself down here to play some football. Keep up your dove uncle winning and come and watch them. Keep up your good work, mate. So now for the review here that New Orleans Field. I've already been here and reviewed the facilities, so we're not going to talk about that tonight. It's purely going to be on football matters. So let's start off with the game. Box 6 Huntley Hill, uh, I've got to give the game, I'm, I'm giving it an 8 right and you might be like what, it's surely a 10 if some a team won 6 now but the reason it's getting an 8 is because it's a bit one sided for me, Huntley never really threatened, um, the minute it was scrappy at the start but the minute that Pollock scored um, they just seemed to cruise from there. And, and we mentioned that the link up play between Daz Christie if there's a million word to treat for them. Um, there are goals all over the team. And yep, they'll be very, very happy that they're in the next round of the Scottish Cup. So, 8 out of 10 for the game. The referee, I thought he did okay. I don't think there was any major instances that he missed. Um, I know there might be fans that will disagree with that. Fans always have their opinion, but... Um, no, uh, the referee was solid, 7 out of 10. Um, and then the tactical element of the game, which is something that I'm going to um, analyse here. I thought that Paul were brilliant, they tried to get the ball down, play it. A lot of their joy came from either flank side self was good, Mullen was good, so was Daz Christie. Um, and what they do do is they get bodies in the box, and when you get bodies in the box, you're going to get goals. Um, and they get six of them tonight, so. Tactically, I think they got the spot on. That's another 8 out of 10 for me. So that gives us a total of 23 out of 30 for the experience here at New Orleans Field. I really enjoyed uh, coming here tonight. It was good to be able to get interviews with the likes of Blair, like I said that, and speaking to all the fans that I spoke to as well. Um, but I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Let me know if there's any way as well that you think that we can improve them, because that's something that we're always looking to do. And just in a wee side note, I know that a lot of you might watch my videos because I go to multiple games. I've decided that I'm not going to go to as many multiple games anymore because, uh, and vlog them because it's taking away from my day with my mates. Multiple something that I enjoy, a team that I go, uh, go to watch, a team that I have an emotional attachment to. So um, it's taking a bit away from my enjoyment of the games going and vlogging it so we're still going to do the odd one here or there but I'm not going to be vlogging Mother of the Week I'm going to be looking for other games throughout the week midweek or maybe even a Friday night or a Sunday because I still want to be able to go and watch Mother of and enjoy it at the end of the day but no guys thank you for watching this video leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and I will catch you in the next one thank you